Welcome to Stu Does America. We've got a lot to get to, but let me start by telling you about Constitution Wealth Management. These are the guys, they're the Patriots' choice in wealth management. And if you've ever avoided shopping at a business that offends your values, uh, you're going to love Constitution Wealth. And, and look, like not buying a case of Bud Light might do make a little bit of difference. But what about like your tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars in retirement funds that might be going towards these same woke companies? It doesn't make any sense. How can you align your investment money with your values? This is why you want Constitution Wealth. They can help you build a solid investment plan because you got to retire someday. You want to get good returns, but you also want to help fight the culture war with your most powerful weapon, your money and your voice. It's your opportunity to help build the parallel economy by working with an investment firm comprised of professionals who are patriots just like you. You already have an advisor. You're not sure if they're doing this for you already. Get a new advisor. Get Constitution Wealth. Why work with anyone else? Go to constitutionwealth.com slash blaze right now. Sign up for a free consultation today. You're going to love these guys. Constitutionwealth.com slash blaze. It's constitutionwealth.com slash blaze. Biden, an elderly man with a poor memory. It's the slogan that defines an election, and now it defines this mug right here. Joe Biden, it says, elderly man with a poor memory. You're going to love having this one around your house. Um, and I will say, I've noticed a little bit of Biden mugflation going on. Look at this. These are This is one of the older mugs. Look at the new ones. They're gigantic. You feel like a quart of liquid in this thing. It's fantastic. Get one. Joe Biden, elderly man with a poor memory. Mugs, T-shirts, all available now. StuDoesMerch.com. StuDoesMerch.com. The code is Stu10. You get 10% off your order. Be sure to check out the show on YouTube as well. YouTube.com slash StuDoesAmerica. And uh, like the videos and do all the things. James Poulos is here with the truth about dirty business dealings in Congress coming up today. We have Donald Trump, of course, heading to the court in Manhattan for the start of his hush money trial. We'll get into that. We're going to start by doing the Israel-Iran escalation. What a weekend it was. Yeah, it was fantastic. Of course, you remember Israel uh, wound up uh, hitting some targets in Syria, wiping out a couple of military uh, leaders. Um, it was a pretty big deal. Iran promised they were going to respond. And you know, look, these guys have been in a proxy war for a long time. We've seen a lot of this going on. Israel hitting assets uh, that are inspired by Iran, uh, funded by Iran all over the area. Of course, groups like Hamas and Hezbollah uh, have uh, done all sorts of uh, shenanigans uh, at the behest of Iran, approved by Iran. The October 7th attacks were approved by Iran. They're not doing those things uh, without getting Iran's approval. Uh, all this stuff has gone on, and we've had to watch it go on. But there's never been this like overt admission that all of this was happening. Like, one side would accuse the other, the other side would accuse the other. But we never saw, like, hey, Iran's going to fire a bunch of missiles into Israel. Of course, this weekend, we did see that. And, and you wonder, uh, is it the beginning of World War III? Uh, hopefully not. I'm going to go with, I, I'm gonna, I, I like the World War II movies. Don't want to live through the World War III thing in real life. That's just my thing. Now, um, Israel is saying it shot down uh, the Iranian salvo shoulder to shoulder with the U.S., this is a pretty interesting development. Um, basic, and it wasn't just us. It seems like Jordan was involved as well, picking off all of these uh, munitions. Now, it, you, you saw the beginning of this. They were like, hey, we're going gonna to send some drones. They're going to be going about 12 miles an hour, uh, and it's going to take about six hours for them to get there, uh, or maybe 10 hours. You have plenty of time to look at them, and you'll see them coming. Here they come. Then they fired some missiles behind that. And the U.S., Israel, Jordan, uh, who knows who else, was very, very successful in shooting down about 99% of these uh, weapons that were incoming on Israel. Um, now, one of the, the, the aero system is one of the layers of defense Israel has, and this is the first time, at least it's believed, this is the first time this has ever been caught on video. Uh, do we have this? This is a, 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 an actual uh, missile being picked off in outer space uh, by Israel. You kind of just see the sky and then, wow, it looks like a fireworks just goes off. That's really what it looks like. It looks like someone set off a really high firework, uh, but it was the aero system picking off missiles in space. 
So that's pretty fascinating. The technology here, I mean, even if you don't really care about Israel or Iran, you don't care about this conflict, you don't want to keep, you want to keep out of it, whatever your opinion is, you have to admit the technology is incredible. It's really, really cool to watch. And the fact that the stuff that they have now is so much better than like the Patriot missile system back in the day, which by the way, they still are utilizing as another layer of defense. But like the, what they have now is so much better than what they had then. It's, uh, I don't know. Let me tell you. Can I take a nerd break here for just a second? Uh, do you ever play real-time strategy games? Like, there was a bunch of these games. They were popular maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. I loved them. Like, basically, you're just controlling all your troops on the board, and you're invading territories, and you're fighting these wars. And as time goes on, you are you make these improvements. You gather resources. This is the nerdiest thing I've ever done in the air. And, uh, but I love these games. I, could, I still play them. I still love them. And uh, over time, the weapons get better. Your defenses get better. And at some point in some of these games, you get to a point where like, your defenses are so good that no matter what the other countries, regions, territories are doing, you can kind of pick them off really easily. And they can do that to you, too. And you get to this weird stalemate period where you, it's hard to really do anything. It's hard to really have these wars because everybody's defending themselves really successfully. And you look at Israel, it almost looks that way. It's like, obviously, we know October 7th happens. There's still vulnerabilities in, in, on the ground and in certain areas. But these, these missiles coming in, uh, I mean, they, they picked off 99% of them. I mean, that's in fact, I mean, if they had picked off 50% of them, it would be incredible. The fact that they did 99%, it's almost like it's impossible to attack them this way, uh, which is really fascinating. Now, the reaction to this, of course, has been fascinating to watch. After the Iran attack, uh, t- attack Kirby, John Kirby, of course, White House official, calls for f- floor vote on Israel-Ukraine aid. We are seeing this advance. Uh, Johnson is on this as well. We're going to see some aid going to Israel. I think that's probably going to happen in the coming uh, days, and I'll be surprised if it gets shut down. You know, it's one of those things that there's a lot of debate about this. Before this, uh, all these weapons were fired. When the weapons get fired, this attack's going on. It's going to be a lot harder to stop it. The momentum is going to be there. And hopefully it pressures the, pressures the Democrats to separate this from the Ukraine side, which has been a lot more difficult to get through uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, John Fetterman, who's actually been really good on the Israel issue inexplicably. Like I, I don't know where this came from, but he has been very good. Fetterman on uh, Iranian airstrikes. It really demonstrates how astonishing we are, how it's astonishing we are not standing firmly with Israel. Sorry, I don't speak hoodie, so it was a little difficult to translate that. But that's a, like, he's been really solid in this from the beginning. And look, I, I don't know how you feel about this. I, I know there's some, some opinions that are all over the board, even on the right at this point. I don't even understand the other side of this argument, frankly. I, I think Israel is completely in the right. Uh, and uh, they did the right thing by taking out these officials who have been plotting the demise of Israel uh, basically publicly this entire time. Uh, they are the victims of October 7th. The, this is just, to me, uh, it's not even a close call. Um, and, you know, the American people look at the Israel-Hamas thing and they say, well, Israel-Hamas, the whole region, and say, well, uh, what do people, you know, who's, is Biden doing a good job with this? And uh, so far, for multiple reasons. Uh, the answer is no. I mean, some people are saying, hey, he's not doing enough. Many others are saying he's doing way too much on his own side. Uh, so far, the polling not looking so good, according to CBS News. Our new CBS News poll, taken before the Iran strikes, show that only a third of Americans approve of President Biden's handling of the conflict. That's down five points since February. In fact, within his own party, more Democrats now sympathize, quote, a lot with the Palestinian people. That's a larger number than sympathize a lot with the Israelis. Which is just absolutely fascinating. I mean, I can't even begin to answer for what the American people are thinking on this. Um, There is some hope, though, that this doesn't inflame into World War III. Uh, There's a lot to go through on this. Let me do my best to kind of summarize it. But one of the things that was interesting about this is the weird way it played out. Right. It was strange. Right. Have you ever seen a situation like this where Iran's like, hey, we launched a bunch of drones. Here they come. They're they're coming really slow. They apparently told Turkey in advance of this attack and Turkey 
told uh, Western allies, I Israeli uh, uh, allies as well as America, so that they were very prepared for this coming. Um, they launched you know, munitions, uh, drones that moved very, very slowly. Someone described them as like a bunch of lawnmowers flying through the sky, like on the little lawnmower engines. And they're just flying through the sky. Not exactly the most intimidating things. They did eventually fire a bunch of missiles behind that. There was some thought that the strategy was to try to work on the air defenses with the drones, confuse the air defenses, and then fire the missiles behind that. Um, you'd think after 300 missiles and drones were fired at Israel, we'd be in the middle of, you know, at least a massive Middle Eastern war, let alone World War III. But because they knocked down 99% of it, you wonder, number one, this is something that we could potentially avoid. Can Israel kind of just step back and take the win here? We got some of their, their officials out. We knocked down all of their attacks. There was basically no damage on uh, Israeli property. There was some, but it was limited. Um, Maybe we just kind of call this off and just try not to escalate this any farther. And the, there's definitely the theory floating around that this was intentional by Iran. Iran wanted to show its own people we're going to do something big, dramatic. We're going to show lots of fireworks. But in the end, we are kind of hoping they pick off all of these things because if they don't, we're in World War III. We know we're going to lose this. We don't want that. We just need to be able to. Uh, kind of quell the demands of our people. We'll see if that's go, uh, true. Iran's attack seemed to uh, plan to minimize casualties while me maximizing spectacle. This is from CNN. And, you know, the, the statement afterward was consistent with this view as well. Iran was like, hey, we just want to make sure everyone knows we consider this uh, situation uh, over. Uh, it's, uh, we did our thing and now we're back to normal. We promise we're not doing anything else. You, of course, can't trust Iran, but it seems like their intention was to hope that they could do this and it would just be over. I don't remember ever seeing like a six hour delay from an attack. Um, uh, you know, we, I mean, we had a time to send a ship halfway around the world to intercept these things in the, in the, in the days leading up. Uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating uh, it was a fascinating thing the way this developed. Now, uh, John Kirby is trying to tamp down the response from Israel. Uh, here's what he said. A lot of people watched what happened in the skies over the Middle East overnight, and they are wondering this morning, has this now escalated into a wider war? I don't think there's any reason that it needs to. And the but has it? Has it is, are, are we now in the midst of a wider war? The president doesn't believe that it needs to move in that direction whatsoever, Kristen. Yeah, if, if they don't do anything, obviously. There will be some sort of delay. Biden counsels Netanyahu to slow things down after Iranian attack. This is all we do now. All we do is tell Israel to stop defending themselves over and over and over again. Europe is echoing these same claims. They want to, or they're urging restraint. And our, our look, our, our motivations here are different than Israel's. Israel wants to protect itself. We just want to avoid worldwide war. Uh, so that's the way that works. And of course, it, it's it just salty coming from this particular administration who's done so much to cause this. I mean, go back and look at the Trump years. This stuff was not happening, and there's, there are many, many reasons for this. And it's also embarrassing to the Biden administration with all the stuff going on with Iran that they've been uh, making sure billions of dollars get into the hands of Iranian leaders. Of course, they say it's, it's just for humanitarian purposes. The sanctions relief that has come about, or uh, it's not even sanctions relief, but the uh, additional funds that have been made available to Iran due to a sanctions relief program that the Trump administration put in place can only be used for humanitarian goods. It doesn't go to the regime. And the idea that the regime was somehow f felt like they were freed up to support these proxies because of that, it just doesn't comport with the facts. But they have been supporting these proxies for many, with, many years. And it comports with their language, though, saying we will use this money in the way that we want to use it. They can't. They can't. They can't. The money is not fungible in this world. Now, he's right. Of course, they were doing going to do it anyway. But that's not a reason to give them more money to do it, just so we're, we could be clear. And of course, the Biden administration has been terrible on this issue forever. Remember, what was it, uh, eight days or five days? Five days before the October 7th attacks. On October 2nd, here's Jake Sullivan talking about the situation in the Middle East. And what we said is we want to depressurize de-escalate and ultimately integrate the Middle East region. The war in Yemen is in its 19 month of truce. For now, the Iranian attacks against U.S. forces have stopped. Our presence in Iraq is stable. I emphasize for now because all of that can change. And the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. 
Wow, that's a fascinating thought, just five days before the biggest terrorist attack in the history of Israel. Um, look, should Israel just take the win here and hopefully avoid World War III? I think this exchange they clearly won. They could do that. Now, if you're in Israel and you are saying, wait a minute, we just had 300 drones and missiles fired at us. What do you mean we're not going to really do anything? That is a, a, a position that most people, including the biggest backers of Benjamin Netanyahu, are not going to be okay with. Now, us as Americans can be like, okay, look, we want to avoid this thing flaring up into some big nuclear exchange or whatever else is on the horizon. Let's skip this chapter of the book and go to the next one where things maybe calm down. Let's just, hey, let's forget all this happened. That's, those are our motivations because their motivations are selfish and they should be selfish. Israel, though, is going to do what Israel wants to do. And the question is, what are, is our administration going to do to either help or hinder that particular situation? It's like Ukraine. It's very similar to Ukraine in some ways. If I were a Ukrainian, I would not be OK with the Donbass region just going away. I would not be OK with Crimea just going away. I would want to fight and get my territory back. However, I'm not Ukrainian and they need our help to do any of those things. So they kind of have to listen to us. That's what you get for being a big influencer uh, when it comes to global affairs. We have some say into what these countries do and what they say and how they do it. And that's the type of thing the administration is trying to figure out. I wonder uh, if there is a, a midpoint, right? A midpoint, not a full release on Iran in Iranian, Iranian territory, but maybe there's another Syria type attack that, that Israel does to show that they were responding. It's hard to not respond, but maybe something that doesn't escalate things farther. We will see if that's the direction this goes. But I think it's, you know, when it comes to a lot of people are like, well, I don't care about those regions and I don't care about that stuff over there. Look, if your gas gets to $15 a gallon, you're probably going to care a little bit, right? Like this is a, a big deal. Uh, if there's a massive inflammation of the Middle East, this is not going to be good for us or anyone else. So the best thing we can do is obviously try to make this thing go away as fast as possible. Will that happen? I, I really don't know. But what I do know is when you're thinking about this from an American perspective and you're thinking about the approaches of a couple of different candidates who are looking at this region, uh, I mean, Trump's record is really good on this stuff. Really good. Like, I, you know, I'm, I, I have plenty of critical things to say about Donald Trump's presidency. I mean, don't even bring up the spending with me in the room. I, I can't take it. Um, but when, you come to, when it comes to Israel, it's, it's maybe his best accomplishment as president. He gets very little credit for it. The Abraham Accords are a big deal. This is a region that was constantly on fire, and somehow he was able to do everything he could to put that fire out, and it was relative calm through the period of the Trump presidency, including a big move of an embassy to Jerusalem. All this went on, and everything was okay, and Biden gets in, and all of a sudden he starts helping Iran, and he's telling Israel, well, don't, we can't really have you fully protect yourself. Uh, you have to kind of go but do that about, you know, through our guidelines, and on and on and on and on. And all of a sudden we have this situation flared up once again, which seemingly is getting worse. I mean, October 7th was bad, bad enough. This is the first time Iran has done this. This is signaling a new phase in this, in this uh, uh, whole catastrophe that's constantly, that we call the Middle East. And the fact is, if cooler heads do not prevail, we could be looking at a very, 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 very hot and dry season throughout the Middle East and God knows where else. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million active members. I happen to be one of them and have been for a while. Uh, play, I play Prize Picks all the time. I love it. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps uh, on Prize Picks, it is just you against the numbers. You don't have to compete against other teams or whatever. You're going you, just predicting what these players will do. All you do is pick more or less on two to six different player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in, as I have, by the way. I'm costing Prize Picks all sorts of money because I keep hitting these things over and over again. You can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Uh, they have all sorts of promos that are fantastic going on all the time. You can turn 10 bucks into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, baseball, all sorts of stuff. Um, in fact, I've got an entry I'm putting in for tonight. I'm looking at it right now here. Here it is right there on my prize picks account. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'll just tell it to you. This is an NBA one. Sabonis over 14.5 points. Trey Young over 22.5 points. Draymond Green over 7.5 assists, which is kind of a high one, but I'm going for it anyway. LeBron James over 1.5 threes because I hate him and he always does well whenever I, I – 
have to do any of these things, so we go with them. Uh, McCollum over uh, four and a half threes made. Steph Curry over three and a half threes made. And I do right now. Place entry. Yeah, up to 11, uh, 13 times my money on that pick if I, get, if I nail those. And uh, six of them are on there. I only have to get four, five, or six to win something. So that's pretty cool. And, and, and you know, I don't know, seems kind of easy sometimes. I'm just saying, give it a shot. Price Picks now offers uh, Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this basketball season, into the playoffs. Download the part Price Picks app today. Use the code STU. You get a first deposit matchup of 100 bucks. The code is STU on Price Picks for a deposit match up to 100 bucks. Get the app now. It's Price Picks. Sorry I missed you for a few days last week. I was out working on a new episode of Blaze Originals. This is a great new series if you haven't checked it out yet. It is done by the Blaze. These are like monthly-ish episodes covering all sorts of topics, not always the, the, the main uh, story in the news. Uh, mine is going to be about the nightmare behind our air traffic control system right now, which was eye-opening. But the most recent one, this, that one's going to be coming out in a couple months, I think. But uh, the most recent one that came out is a great uh, episode from James Polis. He was, uh, he's going to be back, back on the program with us now. Editor at large for Blaze Media, host of Zero Hour right here on Blaze TV. The new Blaze Originals documentary. Uh, uh, is, is a, if you're going to be a subscriber to get it, but you, it's worth it. Bought and paid for how politicians get filthy rich. If you're not already a Blaze TV subscriber, subscribe. Go to steworiginals.com and get 30 bucks off your uh, subscription with the promo code steworiginals. Uh, James is with us now. James, how are you? Hey, Stu. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I appreciate you uh, taking a couple of minutes. Um, this is a fascinating story, and it kind of goes into the idea of uh, insider trading by members of Congress. Can you kind of walk us through the concept of this episode? Yeah, sure. So, you know, evidentiarily speaking, it's very difficult to prove that insider trading is happening, is is a thing in a particular case. And that's why it's very difficult to hold people accountable when there's an appearance of impropriety. So the rules can be a little tough, but uh, the the evidence is out there that, um, you know, when you when you when you look at the kind of information uh, that unusual whales has uh, has compiled. And this is just a guy on the Internet uh, pseudonymously uh, using tools that are that are publicly available. Um, to see when big money moves on trades for reasons that are hard to explain outside some kind of uh, of, of inside information or, or privileged information uh, ahead of the fact. So we're talking about things like uh, like big bets on uh, on defense contractors, uh, like right before a war starts, say the war in Ukraine. Um, we're talking about uh, big money moves by by people who sit on important uh, committees, and you know, in fact, uh, these kinds of moves can even be detected. Uh, among folks who sit on uh, congressional ethics committees. Um, so, you know, it, 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 there is a stink. It stinks to high heaven. Uh, it's, it's tough to nail people. Uh, they've been trying to bring legislation to the floor. Uh, it's, it's hard to get a vote. There's uh, almost like a code of omerta where uh, uh, members know that if they try to push uh, corrective action on this stuff, then they're going to get frozen out of committee assignments and, and maybe even, uh, you know, uh, uh, unseated from Congress uh, in, internally. So uh, it's all kind of a mess. And we're, you know, peeling back the lid and taking a look at all the creepy crawlies inside. <laughs> and it's a fascinating look at this. It's something it is eye opening. Uh, it's amazing that this stuff is going on. Um, now, there have been efforts in the past to try to stop this. I remember Peter Schweizer came out with a book a few years ago talking about this it seemed to lead to uh, what was called the Stock Act at the time. Um, it hasn't particularly worked to stop this. I mean, where are where do we stand with these efforts to try to do something about it? Yeah, it's tough to do. I mean, look, you know, you, you can as a member of Congress, uh, you can tell your spouse, you can tell members of your staff, you can tell uh, members of your staff uh, and their family members, you know, all kinds of folks you can tell. Uh, things that you can't act on legally due to stuff like the Stock Act, where you know it's you know, a, a, a member doesn't want to be seen making these direct bets, uh, but if their if their husband or their wife does, then 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 they're in the clear. So this is exactly what happened with Nancy Pelosi, who you know we reached out to her office uh, to try to hold her account for uh, some of these massive trades. She, she uh, the the Pelosi's went in hard on. Uh, in video and made a ton of dough. That's just one example. Uh, and of course, our office said like, oh, well, you know, the uh, 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 Pelosi's not not doing any of this stuff herself. All these claims are spurious. Uh, she's got a, you know, a husband who's making these trades. It's all all very legal. And as far as it goes, you know, yeah, that's right. Um, so the Stock Act exists. Uh, it's designed to try to, to limit the, the worst abuses. Uh, there is a fine system in place. So if a, a member is caught sort of making uh, trades that they're not supposed to make, uh, they'll get slapped at the fine 
cumulative. They're uh, they're they're uh, permitted to go up into the thousands. Um, typically, what happens is uh, if if a member's caught, they get the minimum fine, a couple hundred bucks, uh, and they just bundle all of the um, the violations into a single fine. So you know you're supposed to be getting nailed for thousands and thousands of dollars if you have this pattern of misconduct. But the reality is that uh, even with the legislation that is in place, uh, it's it's the equivalent of a slap on the wrist, a couple hundred bucks like a parking ticket. <laughs> it's really incredible, and and you can see that this stuff isn't working. You mentioned unusual whales. I follow them on Twitter as well, and. And they put together all these, you know, reports on what people are investing in, and I think they, I think they're the guys that have the, um, a fund or a, a basically a, a invest, a, like an investment fund almost that looks like you could just like pick all the. They show you exactly what's being bet on at the time, and it's up like dramatically better than any other. I, I keep thinking to myself, why do I not just put this together and invest in this stuff? Because if Congress is betting on it, you can be sure it's going to be a winner. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, Unusual Whales basically put together, a, you know, a, a, a simple script so that um, you can you can bet the way that the Congress does. Uh, I mean, look, you know, they would love to have Americans sort of trailing after them, collecting the crumbs that they leave behind. Uh, it's a bad precedent. It's a it's it certainly doesn't follow the spirit of the law. Uh, so, you know, if you want to do it, there's definitely nothing to stop you. But the reality is um, that if uh, if we follow their lead, they're going to push into just uh, uh, ever more territory. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, uh, it's fascinating. I think you're guilting me a little bit here, James, and I understand that. It's probably appropriate. And I did think, too, that if you follow this investment advice, then you're, you're buying the stocks that they're buying. You're actually supporting those investments, which is not, not a good thing, though it, it did cross my mind that it probably is a moneymaker. I mean, it really, it really is, which is, is fascinating. Um, uh, before you go, uh, James, because this is a great documentary, you've got to check this out on Blaze TV. Um, I had to, while I have you here, I have to ask you, maybe you can just give me a couple of minutes and walk me through the last, let's say, year of what's happened with Bitcoin. Uh, and that it's been inc- incredible. I mean, you know, whatever you think is the most important, you, of course, have the ETFs, you have the price increase, you have, uh, I mean, you have the halving coming up. What, what, what's, what should people know about this? What, what's happened over the past year since I've talked to you? Well, look, number go up, as they say, uh, in, in the Bitcoin space. Uh, it's, it's dipped back down. You know, if, you, if you're following the ticker, uh, it's sort of like watching CNN all day and hoping that you have a good understanding of what's going on in the world. Uh, yeah, the number is going to go up. The number is going to go down. The number going up reflects the fact that, look, cryptographic technology and Bitcoin, this is a technology that works as designed. And when you have Wall Street flowing into the Bitcoin space, they don't want people using Bitcoin as a, as a peer-to-peer uh, network that you can use to build uh, markets on and, uh, and, and exchange goods and services paid for with Bitcoin encrypted on chain uh, in ways that we decide uh, to, to protect and, and defend our way of life and our form of government and the kinds of stuff that we've associated with America for so long. Uh, Wall Street, you know, backed, backed by the feds ultimately as Wall Street is, um, they want to reduce Bitcoin to just another asset class, just another, uh, another way of making number go up that is firmly within their financial ecosystem. Uh, now, there might be some folks, you know, in the administration or elsewhere who say, look, we got to keep it this way. China just uh, shut down all Bitcoin. A uh, patriotic thing to do is to make sure that uh, Bitcoin in America is is entirely, you know, a creature of the American financial system. But, you know, gosh, it's I mean, in a sense, uh, uh, Congress creditors who are misbehaving, uh, trying to trying to make a quick buck off of uh, sort of a, a, a rigged stock market system, you know, they're responding in a sort of perverse way to what most Americans are, are responding to already, which is an understanding that, you know, the Wall Street system, our financial system, Federal Reserve, all this stuff, it's basically pretty corrupt. Uh, you know, you got Janet Yellen in there. It's a revolving door. There's the, the, the line between Treasury and the Fed is blurring away. This is bad stuff. It's ripe for abuse. And so, you know, I would be hesitant. I mean, you want to get into Bitcoin, you want to buy Bitcoin, Great, don't let me stop you. Uh, but recognize that this is an incredibly powerful tool, and most of the blocks of Bitcoin right now are controlled by these major Wall Street style uh, investment vehicles. Um, this is, you know, as as dangerous to America's future as something pretty into the hands of a very few number of companies would be dangerous to America. So, uh, caveat emptor: this is not investment advice. This is not financial advice. Um, my book is available on Bitcoin at canonic.xyz. You can actually use the Bitcoin to get something uh, that isn't just the number. Uh, take definitely a space to watch. 
It really is. Uh, it's a fascinating time to watch this go down because that is a real worry. I mean, it, I mean, you can't really control Bitcoin in that way, but like also like God only knows what's going on. It might be good for the price short term. Who knows what this means long term? James Poulos, uh, be sure to catch him on Zero Hour as well as the brand new documentary Bought and Paid For, How Politicians Get Filthy Rich, the newest documentary from Blaze Originals. Again, it's steworiginals.com. You can go there, use the promo code steworiginals. They'll get 30 bucks off your subscription to Blaze TV. James, really appreciate you doing all this hard work. I know these things go, there's a lot to go, that goes into them. So thanks for doing this and uh, thanks for coming back on the program. When you absolutely positively have to buy or sell a home, maybe you come into a large amount of money because you followed Nancy Pelosi's investment advice and you need like a new 12 bedroom mansion. Well, you need realestateagentsitrust.com. I wish, you know, Glenn did this a while ago. He came up with this company, realestateagentsitrust.com, blah, 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 great company. Like you have to find the best agent in your area. It's your biggest financial transaction. That's all true. But what about like, like congressmen I trust? I mean, it would be a, a small website. It would not need a lot. You do not need a lot of hosting room for that. Um, but like, I don't know. Like, we need this concept brought into everything else in our lives. Realestateagentsitrust.com. The name kind of says it all. This is your biggest investment. You really need to have someone on your side that is good at their job that you can trust. So go to realestateagentsitrust.com. Whether you're buying or selling a home, no matter where you're moving across the country, across the street, across the country, no matter what it is. It's a free service to you. It's realestateagentsitrust.com, realestateagentsitrust.com. So kind of a big day in that uh, we have a situation where the former president of the United States and current nominee of one of the two major parties uh, might be going to prison. You know, Uh, he's certainly going to trial. In fact, he was in the courthouse today. New York Times says, well, here's what do we know about the trial? And there's a lot in here. Uh, You know, of course, they take it a lot more seriously than I do when it comes to these allegations. Uh, And of course, trusting Michael Cohen on anything is just insanity. But the biggest thing you could probably know right now is, yes, there's a lot of news that the trial started today, but it's two weeks of jury selection right now. So basically boring. Uh, from where we are right now. This is going to turn into something big, of course. The Trump hush money trial judge has rejected a new demand to recuse himself from the case. Blatantly partisan judge. I, I mean, look, Trump, if Trump loses stuff, he complains about them and says they're biased all the time, whether they are or not. Um, however, in this situation, it's quite clear that this entire thing, this one in particular, is so biased and ludicrous. We are past the statute of limitations for this. They are just manufacturing ways to get around their own rules to go after Donald Trump. They've never gone after Donald Trump uh, or any, anyone else really on anything uh, super similar to this, um, especially in the way they've constructed this case. We've gone over that before. I want to bore you with it again. But the, the bottom line here is that this is probably the weakest of the four criminal trials going after Donald Trump. That being said, they will probably get a conviction on it. I will not be surprised at all. I also wouldn't be shocked if he gets off on this one. It's so blatant. If you get a couple of good jurors in there that can say, no, this is hung jury and, uh, you know, f- forget it. I'm not going that direction. It's, it's ludicrous. I think there's a chance for that, especially in this particular case. The obstruction case when it comes to the documents is going to be a lot harder. This one is just absurd. There's so many problems with it. It will almost definitely get overturned uh, via appeal. But I was, we were talking to Megan Kelly this morning on the radio show, and she brought up a point uh, that we've talked about a little bit before, which is, you know, a lot of people in these polls are saying, not a lot, but like a significant percentage of people in the middle are saying, I would not vote for someone who is a convicted felon. And like I've brought up the theory many, many times, and I'm pretty sure of it, that most of those people will actually Uh, figure out a way to talk themselves out of that position if Donald Trump gets convicted. These are people who say they're voting for Trump now and say they will switch or not vote if Donald Trump is a convicted felon. And like, I just think most of those people are going to say, well, that one was stupid or, oh, come on, look at, it's, you know, they're going to find a way to talk themselves out of that, I think. But as Megan pointed out, what if we're wrong? Like, what if those people are telling the truth in these polls and they're like, you know what, got to that point, crossed the line for me as a convicted felon, I'm not voting for the guy. That could very well make the, dis- the difference in the decision, uh, in the election. So it's, this decision is very, very important. Uh, Trump's criminal hush money trial to collide with the 2024 campaign. I mean, look, the biggest thing is uh, he's going to be dealing with this entire uh, trial and everything else. 
uh, instead of campaigning, which is a big deal. And the way this is fascinating, the way normally these trials would work is you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at trial. And then Friday you'd have off. And in this situation, that would be good for Trump because Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he can go around the country three straight days and do all sorts of events around the country. This particular judge is not doing things this way. And you can say, well, he's saying it's, oh, I've got a lot of community service stuff I do on Wednesdays. Um, I don't know if you believe that or not, but the point is they're giving the off day on Wednesday. So it's Monday, Tuesday at court, Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday in court again, uh, and then the weekend off. So he doesn't have three straight days to string together to go all over the country. He can only do stuff really around New York on that Wednesday, which really hampers uh, him and his campaigning. Shocking it's working out that way. And finally, uh, New York Times has this one. Four years out, some voters look back at Trump's presidency more positively. I mean, this is a weird headline because... I mean, some voters believe everything, right? Like some voters believe bananas make rocket fuel, I'm sure. I I don't know. It's not really a story that some voters believe things. What the real story is, not just some voters believe it, more voters believe Trump had a better presidency than Biden currently has. That's really what the poll shows. And that's vitally important and devastating for Joe Biden, which is the reason they need to do all this other stuff. Just like it was back in the pandemic time, uh, we're facing drug and medical supply shortages again in the United States. As of March, there were more than 200 drug shortages here in the U.S., and it's looking like it's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets any better. Healthcare experts have pointed to shortages, domestic production, uh, the Drug Supply Chain Security Act. All I know is I go to the pharmacy sometimes and I have medicine for myself or my wife or my kids, and they just don't have it. They're like, uh, come back in a week. It's like, well, wait, this is medicine. Aren't I, don't I need it? Uh, you wouldn't think like this, stuff like this could happen in America, but it, it is happening. And that's why I would recommend the Jace case. It provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All you have to do is fill out a simple form online and you'll have it in case you need it. And this is, you know, there's all sorts of add-on options as well, stuff that is really useful for you. Jace Medical is empowering people just like you to be able to take care of your family's health and take it into your own hands. Check them out today. It's jacemedical.com, jacemedical.com. The code is Stu at checkout. You'll get a discount, jacemedical.com, slash uh, promo code is Stu, J-A-S-E medical.com. The code is Stu. Well, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five stories here and only a couple of minutes to get to them. So let me dive right in. Uh, news organizations are urging Biden and Trump to commit to presidential debates during the 2024 campaign. Now, I mean... I, They may be urging both of them, but I don't think Donald Trump's going to have any problems getting to a debate. I don't think he's going to be skipping any debates uh, when it comes to the presidential election. Now, he did so, of course, during the primary season, but that was a strategic point. Now, maybe if he got up by 50 points on Biden, he'd skip those debates. But the fact is, it's going to be a close general election. And Donald Trump wants nothing more than to get Joe Biden on TV over and over and over again in a debate situation late at night. That is what he wants. Now, I will say there are reports that Donald Trump was falling asleep at his trial today. I don't know if that's actually true today. I didn't even see it. I'm just seeing everybody on the left commenting on it. Whatever. I mean, Joe Biden seems to fall asleep every five seconds. Maybe we could in the future, let's just say, target candidates that were less than 100. It's just a uh, it's an idea. Um, I do think there's a real chance a real chance that Joe Biden says, I'm not debating this guy. He's mean. He's unconstitutional. Basically doing the Katie Hobbs playbook from Arizona. Uh, She decided she was not going to debate Carrie Lake uh, because she knew she would lose and she she knew she'd be in a lot of trouble if she did that. Carrie Lake, for what you can say about her, is very good on television, very good communicator, would do very well in a debate format. So Hobbs just ducked her and then uh, she won. She wasn't punished by voters for doing it. She just still somehow won the election. So there you go. We will see uh, if that happens. I think there's a real chance, by the way, um, that uh, Biden just avoids them completely. I mean, I I wouldn't say it's above 50 percent, but it's above 25, I would say, in my opinion. Um, RFK Jr. is saying he has ruled out the libertarian run for president that has been rumored. uh, Not pictured in the headline was that the libertarians also ruled him out. Uh, so just so you know, um, Kennedy is not a libertarian. Um, he's supposed to be in the, this building, uh, today. Glenn is talking to him before a podcast. 
And I just, I, I'm fascinated by this whole thing. How anyone could think this guy is libertarian. Yes, he has a couple of views that line up with libertarians and conservatives, right? Uh, Anti-vaccine mandates. Yes, we all know uh, that he's for that. You know, he's suddenly become this tough guy on the border. You can believe that one if you want. And he's got, you know, I'm a guy who likes the Bitcoin stuff. We were just talking to James Poulos about it. Our case pretty good on that, right? Like there's a few things he's, he's good on. However, can we not forget every other position this guy has taken? Remember, if you're a person who's sitting there going, I don't know, he's got two main party candidates. Maybe I'm not too crazy about Trump. Maybe I'm not too crazy about Biden. And maybe I'll go with RFK. If you're thinking about making that decision, especially if you're like a typical Trump voter, and you're thinking about making that decision, think about the fact that RFK also had to think about that decision. He also had to make that exact same decision. And what did he do in 2016? Endorse Hillary Clinton against the same person that we're talking about. That's what RFK Jr. did. He's done it over and over. He's endorsed Hillary multiple times. He uh, has praised Hugo Chavez. He's I said that Glenn Beck and, and Rush Limbaugh should be put into, well, I, was, I don't know, into a gulag or executed for being traitors. He said the traitor part for sure. The punishment only implied by the Constitution, I suppose. Uh, but he, he's been talking about, he said that people who deny the climate should be put into trials like they're the, in the Hague. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how anyone could consider this. And, and his whole shtick about I was censored. You know, yeah, he was censored, and that was bad. But he is a guy who has been trying to implement a regime of censorship his entire life. He doesn't get points for that to me in my book. Well, that's just me. Uh, hopefully Glenn asks about some of that stuff. Uh, Biden has awarded $830 million uh, to toughen the nation's infrastructure against climate change. This is, uh, don't freak out too much. Because you might think, how, is he just giving away money? When are they going to pass a law on this stuff? This is the infrastructure, the bipartisan infrastructure law. He's just dishing out the cash. So feel fine. It's only $830 million. And when you think about that $830 million, think about this. You will work every day your entire life. And pay taxes your entire life. And all the tax money you've ever made in your entire life will all add up to not even one tiny, tiny bit of that $830 million. So congratulations. You basically are working your entire life for nothing. Today is tax day. Uh, the IRS expects tens of millions of returns to be filed at the last minute. Of course, I filed an extension, as I do every single year. And this year actually got it in on time. So screw you, Uncle Sam. By the way, all this should go away. Repeal the 16th Amendment. Repeal the 16th Amendment.com is the place you can go. You get the T-shirt, which is a great, great freaking T-shirt. It's one of my favorite T-shirts. Uh, re uh, repeal the 16th Amendment. This is, of course, the Income Tax Amendment. Get rid of it. Rework it. Let's do that. That would be a nice thing to do. The mug as well, available for you at StuDoesMerch.com or repeal the 16th Amendment.com. Code is Stu10. And before we go, when you're talking about um, millions of dollars flowing in various directions, Caitlin Clark is going to the WNBA. In second grade, Caitlin Clark wrote down her WNBA dreams. Now they'll finally come true. She said she wanted to play in the WNBA, and she's not only going to play in it. Uh, one unnamed uh, general manager told uh, some sports publication that they would trade their entire team for her. Not just for the money that would flow in just because she's going to fill basically every arena she's going to be playing in for at least the first year, you'd think. Uh, but also the fact that, uh, you know, she's the best player uh, that's come out of college in a really long time and a great piece to build off of. So fascinating stuff uh, in the Caitlin Clark saga. It'll only continue to get better and better because everyone's going to come up with a reason to try to hate her for absolutely no reason. Well, we've got the Trump trials uh, going on right now. We have the election season sort of building. I mean, we'll soon have a VP pick at some point in the next few months. There's a lot of stuff going on, not to mention all the polling. I've been pulling and holding tons of different uh, pieces of analysis for polling and uh, all the stuff that's going on with the election. And we're going to be fueling many, many episodes of uh, State of the Race. State of the Race is this sort of bonus podcast we have on the Studios America feed. So if you go to wherever you get your podcasts, subscribe to the Studios America feed. Follow that feed because you'll get not only this show, but you'll also get State of the Race. Right now, we've been doing them pretty much weekly. We didn't. We, I wasn't around. I was traveling last week. But we'll probably have another one for you on Friday. And then we'll start to increase. Eventually, we'll probably be doing every, one every day as we get closer and closer to the election. So don't forget to subscribe. It's Stu Does America, wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, blazetv.com slash Stu. The promo code is Stu.